So if you look at the gap here in between your engine cover and your battery, uh, just look down into the engine and you'll see uh, this little plastic cap. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay on the video, just there. And that plastic cap is uh, on the end of the uh, dip, dipstick tube. So you can just uh, see it there. And that is the, uh, the dipstick uh, location for your transmission fluid. So here's the, uh, the cap removed. It does just screw into place. As you can see, it's actually got a thread on it. So just unscrew it in the normal manner and that will pop off. You can see on the top there uh, for dealer use only. Now what you would expect to normally uh, find when you pull this out is a dipstick uh, attached to the, uh, the end of it, a, 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 met a standard metal dipstick, just like your oil dipstick. As we can see, this has nothing whatsoever. Uh, so to measure uh, the uh, level of your oil, uh, you've got a couple of options. You can either buy a dedicated uh, transmission fluid dipstick, and they're quite expensive, 25 to 35 dollars or more. Or there is a workaround uh, that can be done on these using your standard oil dipstick. And uh, we're producing a video on that. Uh, so if that's of interest to you, we'll add, a, we'll add a link below this video. Just scroll down to the info section below and we'll add a link for you there. Okay, so we're now ready to go ahead and start the process of checking the transmission fluid levels. A uh, quick note on this, it's a good idea if you can to do it uh, whilst the engine's both cold and then perform a second test when it's warmed up. Uh, if you've watched the DIY transmission uh, dipstick video, uh, which there's a link uh, below, you'll see that you actually mark that dipstick with two sets of marks. There's the lower one, which is for your cold level, and then further up the dip dipstick there is a second mark, which is for the warm level. And so what this would allow you to do, if you perform the cold check first, and you look at it and you can see, okay, well that either looks spot on or well, maybe that looks a little bit low. Let the engine warm up for a good, you know, 15, 20 minutes until they get up to full operating temperature. And then uh, repeat that test uh, once again. Uh, but this time looking at the, uh, obviously the warm marks on the dipstick. And that will give you that kind of second opinion. So you might be looking at it again and go, yeah, it's definitely spot on. Or no, it's, lo it's definitely it was low when I did it on cold. It's still low now. Uh, whilst I'm doing it on warm, so it's definitely low and you can top up uh, as appropriate. So it's just a way of kind of getting that uh, second opinion. And one important point is the, uh, the checks can only be done when the engine is running. Uh, if you stop the engine, uh, all that fluid that's uh, in the uh, uh, gearbox will just sink back down to the bottom of the pan and you won't get an accurate reading. So it's designed to be done with the engine running. Uh, that said, a couple of extra things you need to bear in mind is just before you do that test, uh, what you want to do, hop, hop in, switch the engine on, put your foot on the brake, and then just cycle through each of the uh, gears, going down from uh, park, to uh, park to reverse to neutral to drive, giving it about five seconds in each one, uh, and then back up as well. Because then what you're doing is you're just ensuring uh, that all of the fluid that's in, in that system is actually getting pumped around the system, and that all the chambers that are in that gearbox are all uh, filled and everything's as it should be, and that will give you the most accurate reading uh, when you actually come to check the level itself. So it's important that you do that. Um, another very important thing to remember is if you're doing the cold test, you've actually got to work quite quickly. It's no good um, starting the engine and then waiting five minutes before you check it. Uh, because obviously the engine will start to be getting uh, pretty warm by that time. So you want to make sure you've got everything ready if you're going to do the cold test. Uh, start that car up, check five seconds in each of those gears, and then get out and then check it straight away. Next up, we're going to grab yourself a funnel. It can be a very uh, tight space to get a, a, a normal funnel in. I'm actually using one of these types of funnels. Uh, this came with a piece of garden equipment or a generator or something. So if you've got one of these, that is ideal. Just want to get the tip of that into the end of the uh, dipstick tube, like so. So when you come to pour your uh, bottle in, you can kind of fit it in behind the headlight here and just pour it in. So that's what we're going to do. So that's it guys, that's how you successfully check your transmission fluid level 
for your Dodge Grand Caravan. Uh, if this video has been helpful for you, we'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button uh, before you leave us here on YouTube. And also, if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'd really be helping us out. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you again.